أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بفضل الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين بعث الأنبياء والمرسلين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا سيد الأنام وصفوة الأنبياء الكرام المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأراضين وحجته على العالمين الحجة ابن الحسن فداه أرواح العالمين واللعن على أعدائهم أبد الآبدين ودهر الداهرين اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا قال الله العظيم في كتابه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واستعينوا بالصبر والصلاة وإنها لكبيرة إلا على الخاشعين أمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم to hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam الإمام المهدي please recite aloud salawat على محمد وآل محمد when we were created and brought to this world so called dunya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to trial us and to trial someone you need to put him in hardship so he can prove himself so if you want to rely upon someone you have to trial him you have to test him and the test should be a proper test it shouldn't only have the face of the test but it should have also above the face the apparent part of the test the essence of the test so if you go to the school and the teacher gives you the exams results and then he tests you with that test is he testing? No. Test means test. So he brought us in this dunya <clears throat> and he is testing us and we have to prove ourselves. Do we have actually to choose to whether not accept setting in this test or accept that? Of course not. Why? At the end of the day, we are slaves of Allah. He decides for us. He decided to create us. And it is in his hand to decide how he should test us or how he want to test us. And when it will be our last test and when we will pass away and lay down in our graves and when the day of judgment will arrive and when he will resurrect all of us. It's on in Almighty God's hand. It's his decision, his call. We cannot say anything. We cannot actually suggest anything. Can I suggest to God, the Almighty, to just remove this type of test of me? Otherwise, I wouldn't set for any of his tests and trials. Of course not. And sometimes, Almighty God's tests are hard. And put that in your mind. That Iblis has actually sweared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take down as much humans as he can. Imam Sadr says in one of his saying that even good people even those who have legitimate faiths will face shaitan 
And this verse is very obvious in delivering that message. Where? I will sit where? For those who are actually on the right path, I'll try to trick them, to seduce them, to let them go away from the path of the truth, the path of haq. So it's hard. What should we do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْتَعَذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ You have to seek refuge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he gave us too many, allow me to say weapons, to fight back not only Iblis and Shaytan, but also our desires. One of the things that he gave us is wisdom and we talked about it. the other thing is he favored us with too many ibadat too many types of ibadat he gave us the permission to call him imam zain al abidin in one of his supplications of sahif al sajjadiyah says and praises Almighty Allah. You ordered us. You asked us to ask you. Otherwise, I would have said that you are so sublime and almighty that I don't have actually the permission to call you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, on the day of judgment, they will be called to prostrate towards Allah, but they can't. Why they can't? Because they didn't pray, they didn't prostrate in dunya, they didn't submit to Allah in dunya, then and hereafter, they won't be able to do so as well. So every day, every day, every day, we have to pray, to pray, to pray. Yes. Why? So we can face hardships and we can actually get out of Almighty God's tests and ordeals that He decrees upon us. We can actually go out of them with holding our faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِرِينَ Try to seek help of what? As-sabr. Ahlul Bayt alayhum as-salam explain sabr and they say sabr in this verse means fasting and it's obvious the sabri was salat and seek help of praise and fasting or seeking help of fast fasting and seeking help of praise is hard but upon those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says if you face an ordeal any grief, any hardship in dunya, go to the place that you usually pray in and pray in that place a couple of rak'ah and seek help of Allah. Or if you face any hardship, fast for Allah. And when you fast for Allah, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you. Look, Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam were trialed by Almighty God and well, they, they were oppressed by tyrants. They were killed brutally by tyrants. They were put in prison. They were actually executed by tyrants. Yet we see they used patience. How? 
when Harun al-Abbasi put Imam Musa ibn Ja'far, peace be upon him, in his prison, Imam al-Kadhim alayhi salam did a sujood. And he said in his sujood, Allahumma, لَطَالَمَا طَلَبْتُ مِنْ أَنْ تُفْرِغَنِي لِعِبَادَتِكَ وَقَدْ فَعَلْتْ فَلَكَ شُكْرِي Always I ask you, O oh Allah, to give me the opportunity so I can actually remember you only. I can actually just pray for you and fast for you. And you gave me that opportunity. And that's why I want to thank you. How Imam al-Kadhim alayhi salam used patience while he was trialed by the enemy when they put him in, in very dark actually prison when they tortured him yet we see that he used patience and he was obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praying towards Allah praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how? وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ In these three months the month of Rajab and month of Sha'ban and month of the holy month of Ramadan, every night we have a mustahada prayers. Why? Why we have this huge amount of a prayers and ibadat and mustahabat, fasting, good a'mal. Why? Because they are our way to face hardships and to come out of all of our deals and hardships holding our faith and iman. We hear that the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib used to pray 1,000 rak'ah each day. I can remember once a scholar from other sects came to the Al-Allam Al-Ameen and told him that is impossible for someone to pray 1,000 rak'ah per day. It's impossible, mathematically impossible. And then Al-Allam Al-Ameen told them to stay as his guest. And then he went and did an ablution and came back and told him just count. And they started to count and he prayed 1,000 rak'ah to prove to them you can do that. Probably it takes 15 hours. Of course, probably not every single day Imam Ali alayhi salam did so because sometimes he used to be in war, sometimes he used to be in hajj, sometimes he used to be, I don't know, had, had things to do, other things, but sometimes, especially when he was not the ruler, the governor, the head of the state of Islamic country, back then he used to do that. So how he faced all of those ordeals, as he said, Ara Nahba, I used to see how they steal what belongs to me, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me, what the Prophet gave me. In the day of Ashura, they've stolen everything of Ahlul Bayt Everything. And when Yazid saw that his position is so weak after the sermon of Lady Zainab and the sermon of Imam Zain al-Abideen, he came to Imam Zain al-Abideen and said, and told him that uh, I did not order Ibn Ziyad to kill you, to kill your father and to take you as captured and prisoner and sent you to me, it was his decision. Of course he was lying. Okay? And then he said, whatever you need, we'll give it to you. Any amount of money you need, we are willing to pay you. Pay you back as much as you need. Imams suggested, we don't need anything. Anything. Only one thing. Just give it back to us. You, you, you also, your army, have stolen the scarf of my mother father. Miqna'atu ummi father. We only need that. Just give it back to us. We don't need anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do whatever is appropriate 
and will actually trial you with his just in dunya and in hereafter. So what I'm trying to say, how Ahlul Bayt السلام, defeated all of those ordeals, all of those hardships by paying attention to Allah, by praying, by fasting, by ibadat, whether they are wajib or mustah. And that's why we are ordered to do so. Especially in the month of Ramadan, especially in nights of distant, we are ordered to pray, to fast, to do the mustahabbat, to seek help by doing them. If someone can pray in the mosque, let him pray in the mosque. Every day, three times, yes, let him do that. I can remember once, one of my relative actually told me that he caught a cab in Mashhad, the holy city of Mashhad, Mashhad al-Imam al and then he asked the cab driver, uh, how many times you visit the shrine of Imam al per week? How many times? He replied, I visit the shrine of Imam al three times a day because I pray all of my wajibat prayers in the shrine of Imam al he is favored by Allah with tawfiq to pray. Although, yes, he's a cab driver. He can go close to that shrine. He has the opportunity. But three times a day, it's hard. It's hard. So if someone gets the tawfiq to pray three times a day in the mosque, it's very good. And he should have that in his mind. If he do so, he will be able to gain the strength he need to face hardships and ordeals and to get out of Almighty God's test proudly. So why we have all of this amount of ibadah, mustahabbat, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to pray in time, to pray it's not an, I'm not saying it's hard, but it's not an easy. Probably somebody might say, okay, it's okay for me to pray once a week, all the prayers I need. No, that's not enough. Every day, أَقِمَ الصَّلَاةَ لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَىٰ غَسَقِ اللَّيْلِ وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ إِنَّ قُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ كَانَ مَشْهُورِ We have to pray three times a day. Because we seek help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to face hardships. Usually you see that those who care about their prayers, the fasting. If you want to book a flight to travel, just look at the timing. If you can find a flight that, if you get that flight, you're not going to miss any of your prayers. Go with that option. Let the prayers be one of your actually priority. Let fasting be one of your priority. Why? Because you seek help. You can benefit from your prayers, from your fasting, from your good deeds. I've seen scholars, good people, Ubad, those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who really care about their prayers, about their mustahabbat, about their wajibat, really care about that. And how many verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mentioned that you should pray. Sometimes he actually talks about those who pray. He praises them. Sometimes he encourages us to pray. Our Prophet comes to us and tells us that it's good for you, it's recommended for you, one of the signs that you can distinguish through that sign 
the followers, the true followers of the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt from those who do not follow the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt is the praise of 51 rak'ah per day. It's very important. If someone can do that, let's say he doesn't have a job that actually clips him, hardly that he cannot find any spare time to do so, let him pray. Why not? Seek help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through prayers and fasting. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْحَاشَعِينَ And that's why Ahlul Bayt الْبَيْتِ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّلَامِ Try to pray for Allah and to fast for Allah as much as they can. So they can face ordeals and they can use patience when they face hardship. So, don't say that why we have all this amount of mustahabbat. That if you want to do only the mustahabbat of this one, the whole mustahabbat of this one. For instance, if you want to recite Dua of Tatah and Dua Rihamza Thumali and Dua al Sahaf and Dua Baha and pray Salat al Layl every night and recite Quran as much as you can. You won't find any spare time to even think about sin at all. And you will gain strength of these prayers. When Imam Sadiq says, if you face an ordeal, do or make an ablution, do a wudu, and pray to Rakat, and seek help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He meant that. And that really can help us. Really can help us. If a man faces hardship in his life, let's say his wife doesn't have that good behavior, let him pray. And let him put that in his mind. That if he tries to be patient with his wife, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him as he rewarded Prophet Ayyub. This is in our narration. And if a lady faces hardship in her life because of her husband's behavior, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and she, use, she uses patience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward her with the reward of Asiya, the daughter of Muzahir, the ex-wife of Fir'aun, la'natullahi alayhi. And how they can reach a status, they can use patience in that status by seeking help of Allah, by praying and fasting. They say that, actually one of my relatives just told me that story about his grandfather. He said that my grandfather used to study with a great merger. I'm not going to name the name of that merger. A great merger in Qom, probably 50, 60 years ago, more or less, I'm not sure. And that merger used to have a wife who did not have very good behavior. She was always doubtful about him, always bothering him with her tongue and etc. Although he was a great merger. But he used to use patience. There is a merger called Ayatollah al-Sheikh Murtaba al-Ha'ari. The son of Ayatollah al ugma al-Sheikh Abdul Karim al-Ha'ari. The founder of Qum Hawza. He had very good behavior as well. Once one of his students told him that you have very good behavior, we like you. Even when someone comes to you and he started to curse you, swear at you, you don't say anything. You are very patient. He says, yes, I'm patient. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me that. However, that scholar, and he named that scholar, that marriage. That scholar, when people used to swear at him, he used to smile in their face. 
not only use patience, but also smile in their face. Their faces. That's a lot. How? How? How someone can reach that level? Through a badat. And this is not a narration. So someone comes and says that probably this narration is not authentic and things like this is verse. A verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, we accept all narrations that are mentioned in our books. That's something else. But what I'm trying to say is this is a verse of Allah and too many narrations under that verse actually telling us the meaning of this great verse. That you live in this dunya, you might lose one of your beloved relative, beloved friend. You might lose your health. You might lose your job. You might lose your wealth. You might lose your country. All of us, our ancestors used to live in overseas, in Iraq or Iran, I don't know where. But we are here. We lost our country. Most of us cannot go back even because they built their lives here. They can't go back even. What should they do? I was, I was, tra I was traveling with Anarja about six, seven years ago when in an airport we faced a problem. That merger, that great merger, faced a problem. And then I got really nervous for him. Then we sat in a small room in, in the international airport and he started to talk to me. I was so confused. He started to talk with me about Islam and how should we spread Islam. He wasn't paying attention to all of those things. And when Salat al-Layl's time came, he went and he made his ablution. He did his ablution and he went and prayed Salat al-Layl. And everything was fixed next day. What I want to say, those who try to seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Salat and Siyam and helping others, it's not only Salat and Siyam, helping others, helping poor people, helping relatives, being keen to their parents, to their kids, to their families, but especially Ibadat. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that in his book. They won't lose it when they face any hardship or, or the, we ask, we all ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the love of ibadat and to put the love of himself in our hearts so we can actually feel the eagerness towards ibadat in our hearts and we pray and fast only for Allah without any riyah and we pray correctly as he liked hadha wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala muhammadin wa alihi al tahirin if there is any question and I can answer it I'll be happy to answer it There is a, an encyclopedia, encyclopedia of supplications. I don't know, it's 15, 20 volumes. Uh, and it's a thick volume. Each volume is about around 800 to 900 pages. All of that is supplications of our Prophet and his progeny. But why? Because we need it. We need supplications. We need all of those supplications. If you need a kid, there is a supplication. If you need, for instance, money, there is a prayer for getting money. If you need to feel secure, 
there is supplication and prayers to feel secure. If you have a ham, a gham, a grieve in your heart, one of Imam Ar-Rida's uh, companion came to him, Al Mu'alla ibn Khunais, I believe. And he asked Imam Rida to teach him a supplication that if he feels the grief in his heart for no reason especially you know what they called someone who is sick uh, yeah, who has a mental problem because he always feel a grief a deep grief in his heart Imam Rida taught him Allahumma Bismillah ar-Rahman it's a long uh, supplication Allahumma an kana dhunubi qad akhlaqat wajhi andak وباعدتني عن استيهال رحمتك فإني أتوجه إليك بمحمد وأهل بيته عليهم السلام. It's a very nice. محمد وعجل. It's very nice supplication. If you need a wife, there is supplication, there is prayer. If you have debt and you need to pay it back, there is supplication. I'm not talking about the second wife. I'm talking about the first wife anyway. So don't uh, actually. Uh, understand me wrongly. If you if you have debt, you borrowed money, for instance, uh, from the bank to buy a house, and sometimes, really, especially when the interest rate rises, as they say that next year they will rise the interest the interest rate, and uh, that might cause a chaos uh, in Australia. If you feel that there is supplications and a prayers. You can pray, you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove that problem off you. I can remember one of my teachers, he passed away. When he passed away, was, he was, I think, 100 years old. Ayatullah said, Ali Rida Quddusi. Back then, in the era of Shah, he told me that story. He said, I didn't have that paperwork because I was in Iraq. And before that, I migrated to India with my father, something like that, when uh, Rida Shah actually uh, legislated the law that hijab is banned in Iran. And then I went to Iraq and I came back to Iran. I didn't have the Shinasnam or citizenship of Iran, although we were Iranians. And I was really upset, probably this story about 70, 80 years ago. Then I went, he used to live in Tehran. I went to visit and visited uh, Sayyid Abdul Azim Al Hassan, and I asked him. I prayed Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, to fix this problem for me, to help. And then I had a majlis. I went to that majlis. I felt that somebody is telling me just tell the man that invited you to recite the majlis. Tell him your problem. And I told him. He told me that's easy. I told him, how? It's easy. He said, because the interior minister is my friend. Tomorrow we'll go. And tomorrow we went and visited him and sat there for half an hour and he gave me the citizenship. On that single meeting. Just imagine if someone wants to do that, how he can get the connection to the interior minister. Let's assume in Iraq, in Iran, elsewhere. Here, we've got a problem. Too many of our um, friends have got some problems here. They, they migrated to Australia. They still uh, haven't got the um, actually proper paperwork so they can travel, or just uh, sponsor the families. If they want to get to the interior mess, it's hard to migration. Ministers, very hard. But they had it through what? Supplications and a prayers and dua. So always, let us try, let us read, let us try to understand what Ahlul Bayt says in Mafatih al Janan, the second part of Mafatih al Janan. Al Marhum Muhaddith al Qummi has a whole chapter about Adiyat al Wasail al Masail, supplications and prayers for specific hajat and needs. You need a house, pray this. You need a, to get rid of your debt, pray this. You need to have a child, pray this. 
and read this application. You need a boy. Do this a'mal. You need a house. Do tawassul to Imam al-Jawad and pray salat al-Imam al-Jawad. Peace be upon him. If you want to travel and you think you will face hardship in this travel, for instance, you want to go to Hajj and etc. Do tawassul to Al-Imam Al-Rada Salawatullah Salaamu Alayhi and etc. And etc. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala made the way easy for us by appointing prophets and their successors and teaching us teachings that can actually help us in this dunya and in hereafter. Any questions? No? That's good. So, clear, inshallah. Okay. Samahta Sayyid opened the way yesterday for me to recite Aqraya. And I will recite Aqraya tonight as well. Ajeeb. نرى أن زينب صلى الله عليها وفي موضوع مرتبط مع بحثنا في هذا اليوم في ليلة الحادي عشر لم تترك صلاة الليل نحن نعجب كيف صبرت زينب ولكن زينب لا تعجب من صبر نفسها لأن الله معها هي تصلي صلاة الليل كي تستطيع أن تتحمل ذاك الحمل الثقيل من المصائب لم تكن مصيبة ولا مصيبتين ولا ثلاث مصائب ولا أربعة ولا عشر ولا مئة ولا ألف كيف تأتي زينب إلى جسد أخيها المقطع المرمي على الرمال تجلس عنده أول ما تفعل تديره على ظهره لأن الحسين سيد الشهداء هو المنحور من القفا الشمر ما كان يستطيع أن يرى بعيني أبي عبد الله الحسين ويذبحه لأن الإمام الحسين شجاعته كانت بحد أنه إلى آخر لحظات حياته كان يقاتل أعداء حتى ببصره وحي له الفداء أدارته على ظهره ثم أشارت إليه بسبابتها أأنت أخي أنت ابن والدي أأنت حمانا أأنت رجانا قم يا أبا عبد الله وانظر إلى أخيا من المحروق وانظر إلى النساء والأطفال ثم وضعت يديها تحت ذاك الجسد المقطع رفعته قليلا نحو السماء وقالت اللهم تقبل هذا القربان من آل محمد لكن عز عليها أن ترى أخاها يا مقطع الأعضاء فثت بأحزانها نحو مدينة جدها رسول الله يا جداه يا رسول الله صلى عليك مليك السماء هذا حسين بالعراء مسلوب العمامة والرداء منحور الراس من القفا يا جدي يقوم هذا حزين مذبوح على الشاط وعلى التربان مطروح يا جدي ما بقت لمن الطعن روح 
يا جدي قلب اخوي حزين فطار يا جدي مات ما حد وقف دونه ولا نغار غمض له عيونه وحيد يعالج ومنخطف لونه لونه ولا وايا يا حد بحلقه ما يقطر لكن ما المرجع لله انا لله وانا اليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا اي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبه للمتقين الهنا وسيدنا ومولانا نقسم عليك باحب الخلق اليك محمد واهل بيته عليهم افضل الصلاه والسلام ان تعجل لوليك الفرج والعافيه والناس وتجعلنا من انصاره واعوانه وشيعته ومحبيه والذابين عن إلهي بهم اشف مرضانا بهم اقضي حوائجنا بهم احفظ شبابنا إلهنا بهم وفقنا لمراضيك وجنبنا معاصيك إلهنا بهم وفقنا لزيارة أوليائك وارزقنا شفاعة أوليائك إلهنا بهم احفظ الإسلام وبلادنا من كل سوء آمنا في أوطاننا لا تسلط علينا من لا يرحمنا إخواني الحاضرين أخواتي الحاضرات تقبل منهم ومن المؤسسين ارحمنا برحمتك الواسعة يا أرحم الراحمين وارحم أمواتنا وأموات الحاضرين والمؤسسين ومن مات على الإيمان بالأخص العلماء والشهداء وخدمة أبي عبد الله ونهدي لهم ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد